So today I'm going to be talking about some of my work um, looking at the fracking microbiome. So what is hydraulic fracturing? We're going to talk about that in a second. But I wanted to put this map of the world up so you can see across the globe where hydraulic fracturing is actually commercially important for the harvesting of energy and gas. Across this map, the United States actually leads the charge. In fact, in the United States, there's 16 states in the US that are actually having commercial hydraulic fracturing enterprises for energy harvesting. The most famous shale plays that you're going to hear about are the Marcellus in the Northeast. The Marcellus actually contributes 30% of the energy on the ele electrical energy on the eastern seaboard. Another infamous shale play in the US is the Permian. It's believed that the Permian houses as much oil as there is in Saudi Arabia. So hydraulic fracturing is important to the US energy economy. Myself and others in this community have spent a lot of time looking at the, these ecosystems before energy harvest and after energy harvest. And with Dave Cole and Kai Hendricks, we can tell you that in these deepest shale plays like the Marcellus that are 2,500 meters below the surface, when we look at life before, we see it's at or below the detection limit in terms of intact life. However, the game changes when we hydraulically frack the system. So what is hydraulic fracturing? Hydraulic fracturing is essentially the injection of water into the deep subsurface, and that water pressure creates hairline fractures. Those hairline fractures allow that trapped gas and oil to escape that's bound in the rock matrix. That then flows up to the surface. This process, this injection of water, and we're talking water about the volume of eight Olympic-sized swimming pools, contains microbial biomass. Also, chemicals are added to this water. So essentially, hydraulic fracturing is creating the physical space for life, it's adding the microbial inoculum, and it's providing the chemistry for life. And so what we're going to be talking about today is the microbial impacts on this system. My work has looked at these impacts, and the negative impacts of these processes is that when microbes grow in this system, they clog these fractures. Also, microbes, as a byproduct of their metabolism, produce sulfides, which sour the oil and also cause corrosion. All hope is not lost. Microbes in the system also can have beneficial aspects, and a big thrust of my work is looking at methanogens in systems. And so these organisms actually growing down whole can produce methane and surfactants, which help harvest the hydrocarbons from the system. And in fact, a study not done by my lab, but using isotopic signals in the Marcellus, has indicated that methanogens in the system, active new biogenic methane, can contribute anywhere up to 12 to 20% of that methane signal. And so this last kind of image is this idea that we can act as puppeteers. If we understand those fun fundamental microbial interactions that allow persistence in the system, perhaps we can upplay those beneficial aspects and downplay those negative aspects. So life in the fractured shale well is not easy. And what I'm showing you here is five different shale plays in, denoted in color. And what you're looking at is the conductivity over time. And what you can see is that their salinity in these systems increases over time. And so what we've also shown pretty extensively is that regardless of the differences in input fluids from lakes and ponds and the different chemistries, that these microbial communities converge into a similar microbial tribe that's composed of about 10 members. And these 10 members are conserved across these different geographic locations. And so the story that we're going to be talking about today is microbial survivor. Essentially, we're talking about what happens when we take microbes from the surface and we inject them deep into the sediment layer, and we're looking at what allows them to persist in this system. And just like reality TV, these microbes, the first thing they do when they get to their new habitat, they have to deal with these environmental hardships. There's no McDonald's, there's no cell phone, there's no Twitter. These microbes need to deal with the salinity. And how they deal with the salinity is osmolites. So they actually, the microbes that all persist in the system, they produce these organic carbon and nitrogen compounds that allow them to equilibrate the inside of the cell with the outside environment. And when we look across fractured shales, we find that there's actually one core metabolite that's always present, despite these dynamic fluctuations in its abundance. Just like reality TV, these microbes also compete with each other, and there's cheaters. 
And so these microbes in gray are actually taking up this osmolite without actually producing any value for the community. Importantly, for the persistence of life in the system, there's also alliances that form within this tribe. And one of these alliances is between the methanogen, who produces the glycine betaine, and halanaerobium, which is a dominant member of the community, sometimes upwards of 90% of the biomass in the system. Turns out that halanaerobium takes this osmolite, ferments it, and creates a substrate that then feeds back to this methanogen. So again, this alliance may explain the persistence of these two core tribal members that we see across fractured shales. Just like reality TV, there's predators. These aren't bears and lions, but in the deep subsurface, they're viruses. And these viruses target microbial populations. We've shown very compelling data where the viruses come up, the microbes crash. And this pattern continues across the time series within a well, and this pattern occurs across shale plays. The picture here is actually from Mike Wilkins at Colorado State, and he's actually isolated these novel viruses and shown that they can actually erupt cells in the laboratory, shale-relevant strains. So the take-home point for today is, one, microbial contestants are probably more resistant than reality TV stars. Um, these microbial contestants have negative and positive impacts on energy recovery. The second one I want you to kind of put in your heads is this idea of organic nitrogen transformations. Others in this room, like Karen Lloyd and Victoria Orphan, who's not here, have shown that organic nitrogen metabolism is really important in these deep subsurface systems. And lastly, I want to make a pitch for studying these simple engineered systems. By understanding these metabolic networks and these predations that we have in these systems, we can scale that to more complex systems. And so now we're taking this show on the road, and we're looking at it in the human gut. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time.